Thank you. Um, for question six, we will start with Mr. Gavin, then Mr. Tesler, Mr. Lehrer, and Mr. Steinke. Um, what role do you believe the government should play in regard to the relationship a woman has with her health care provider? And do you think reproductive health care services should be singled out for increased scrutiny for the government? And that was tied in with questions that we had regarding birth control and Planned Parenthood. Yeah, great question. This is one I get quite a bit on the campaign trail as well. Um, basically, um, the conversations between doctors and, and women that have those conversations shouldn't be between those folks alone. It shouldn't be between anybody else. The government has a very little role to play in that. This is a really nuanced issue um, when it comes to access for women's, hair, uh, women's health care, when it comes to reproductive health, when it comes to birth control. I think I'm in line with most democratic views on this issue. Um, but obviously, we live in a community that's relatively conservative socially in some ways. We live in a community that, that understands um, or respects traditional values in some ways as well. What I would say is, as a lawmaker, even though I'm a Lutheran Christian, as a lawmaker, I don't think it's my job to interfere with those conversations and those decisions, at least in the first 14 weeks of a pregnancy. But I understand this is a very raw issue, and I actually really appreciate having these conversations on the campaign trail as well, because it's very raw and very real here in Northeast Wisconsin. Well, one of the things that's always been important to me is, uh, you know, my family has uh, been involved in the pro-life movement for my entire life, and I'm very pro-life too. Um, I believe that, uh, um, you know, a baby has rights too. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, the way I've always conceptually thought of it is, if a what's the difference between somebody outside of the womb and inside of the womb? Uh, it's location, obviously, a body part. If we took any one of you, we took out, you know, we eliminated arms or legs. There's no body part we could really take away from you, um, other than possibly your brain would make you a human being. So body parts, the number of body parts that you have, uh, isn't a good determinant on whether you're human or not human. Uh, the location, I don't think, is a good determinant on whether you have human rights or not. Uh, if you were inside of a whale, if you were on Mars, if you were in some other place, you would be a human being. So why wouldn't you be a human being if you're within another person and another person's womb? So in my opinion, um, I do find that a person that is within someone is a human being that has those rights. And I believe that everybody's rights should be protected. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I, uh, as Scott said, I think that probably fall in line with most of the um, traditionally democratic um, views on this issue. I think that as a former healthcare provider, I understand you know, basic HIPAA laws. The conversation that happened in the room with the patient stayed between me and the patient. I think it should stay that way for these conversations as well. As far as Planned Parenthood is going, I know that's a, a lightning rod, but my own sister, while going to graduate school um, to be, become a, a, an asset astrophysicist, um, couldn't afford healthcare. And Planned Parenthood was the only way that she got her yearly exams and her mammograms and all those other things that kept her safe and healthy. So I know it's a bit of a lightning rod, but I feel like it's, um, that's an unfair characterization of most of the services that they provide. Um, and I think that as far as, as this goes, this is one area where I'm definitely a small government person, where government should stay out of it and um, let people live their lives as they see them. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is, these are, these are the, probably the most difficult topics to address as a legislator when you have the intersection of personal religious beliefs, science, um, personal choices. It, it's really difficult as a legislator to know where to draw the line uh, between personal and religious beliefs and science and, and good public policy. Uh, I'm, I'm pro-life, uh, I'll be pro-life. Um, my views on that were shaped uh, early on, but even more so when uh, my wife and I suffered a, a miscarriage uh, with our first child. Uh, we had gone to the doctor, we had heard the baby's heartbeat, we had planned for that child to be part of our lives, and then we lost her. And nobody can ever tell me, even though that child was less than 20 weeks when we 
miscarried, but that wasn't our baby. It was our baby. So for me, it's, it's something uh, deeply personal. Um, Roe versus Wade is the law of the land. Um, I personally believe if, uh, when it comes to legislation that we just shouldn't have taxpayer dollars going towards uh, abortions. And I think that's probably as a legislator uh, where I draw the line as far as my personal belief. 